Excellent. So hi, everybody. I'm Shailuja Suresh, a senior solutions architect with AWS. And we all know that security is a broad topic and which can easily go from the basics to advanced level details. So that said, today, let's focus on the security pillars which govern a workload on AWS. And I'm going to deliberately keep this at an intermediate level. That said, some prior knowledge on AWS services at an intermediate level is required for certain parts of this presentation. That said, let's dive right in. So there is no security presentation without the AWS well architected pillars. So creating technology solutions is a lot like constructing a physical building. Now, if the foundation is not solid, it may cause structural problems that undermine the integrity and function of the building. If you neglect the six pillars of well architected, it can become a challenge to build a system that delivers requirements and meets your expectations. And focusing on the security pillar alone, this pillar ensures the ability to protect information and systems to deliver business value through risk assessments and mitigation. All right. So now here is the template for a secure environment under the security pillar. Now let's see what these individual principles are and what their relevance is. For our customers, it's really important that you start with a strong identity foundation. So everything you do in computing and in the cloud starts with an identity and having centralized identities so that you have all your identities in one place to ease management is important. And then to reduce that security risk, monitoring and logging is needed. The next is applying security at all layers, which is a defense in depth approach. So starting with your infrastructure on your outer edge, all the way through to securing your application is needed. The next one is to automate the infrastructure as code templates with the security best practices baked in by default. This will save you a lot of time and ensures repeatability. The next is protection of data in transit and at rest. And typically this comes down to encrypting all data in transit and rest and not having people, especially folks like administrators with full access to all data when there is no need to access that data. And finally, it's really important to be prepared for a security incident. And this involves being aware of what you need to do who you need to reach out to during the security event. All right, so the first area of the security pillar is identity and access management. And this can be divided into three considerations. Who has which access to what? And the best approach to address this is through a multi-account strategy. Now, rather than just employing a single account in AWS, it's recommended to set up different AWS accounts for different purposes. This will isolate the components of the workload and control who has access at a very coarse level. Consider using AWS Control Tower, which actually provides the easiest way to set up and govern a secure multi-account AWS environment. And also, by the way, Control Tower helps to implement AWS best practices by default. So an organization management account in AWS organization would manage the structure of the account's governance. Tools like single sign-on also will be enabled here to create or connect workforce identity in AWS and manage access centrally. A best practice is to federate access from a centralized identity provider, and this reduces the requirement for multiple credentials and provides an opportunity to integrate with HR's on onboarding and offboarding processes. Now, AWS organizations allows accounts to be arranged in organizational units or OUs, as you see in that picture. A log archive account helps to centralize logs that the security team may need, for example, to access logs like DNS logs or VPC flow logs. Now, for teams performing security actions, a separate security tooling account is available where they will set up their security tooling and automated responses. Now, another common OU is the infrastructure OU. Here, tooling that needs to be shared between components like shared networking can also be set up. And as part of this, the team could actually implement build tooling to deploy their application 
separating out the development test and production environments into separate accounts. Now, this ensures that developers don't have access to production data when they don't need it. All right, now let's talk about the principle of providing lease privilege. AWS IAM Access Analyzer helps remove unrelated public and cross-account access by analyzing existing permissions. It then generates the least privileged policies based on who attempted to take what actions against AWS resources within an account, and even if the action was even allowed or denied. So as a result, the generated policy will only contain actions that were actually undertaken by the users. Yes, that makes it simple setting up least privileged permissions. Let's move on to detective controls. Detective controls are used to identify a potential security threat or incident. And here is a nice little graphic. To centralize findings, it is recommended you start with AWS Security Hub, a security posture management service that performs security best practice checks, aggregates alerts, and enables automated remediation. Now, Security Hub takes alerts from a number of sources, as you see there, including Amazon Guard Duty, a threat detection service that monitors AWS accounts for malicious activity, Amazon Macy, a fully managed data security and privacy service that uses machine learning to discover and protect your sensitive data in AWS, and Amazon Inspector, a service that continuously scans AWS workloads for software vulnerabilities and unintended network exposure. Moving on to infrastructure protection. Now, defense in depth is a best practice in any type of environment. And in the case of infrastructure protection, we want to look at how networking in computers is protected. It is required to, uh, to look at how teams are enforcing boundary protection and monitoring points for ingress and egress. Both are essential to an effective information security plan. All right, so let's dive into infrastructure protection with an AWS architectural diagram. For example, let's say while hosting the workloads with some domain records in Amazon Route 53 and with CloudFront enabled for content distribution, and we are using an AWS web application firewall with some managed rules. So that adds a layer of defense at the edge of the workload. Now, this also unlocks DDoS protection through AWS Shield. And then you will see that there are different network layers to group components that share reachability requirements are created. Note here that each subnet layer has its own network access control list and route table. So the controls are specific to that subnet's purpose. You will notice that the application layer itself, which executes code, is separated from the database, which holds the state. It is recommended to create a golden Amazon machine image or AMI that contains everything the application needs to run. This will also allow the application to remain highly available during patching. Now for the database layer, you see that we use Amazon Aurora and such managed services reduces the team security maintenance tasks as part of the shared responsibility model. So by separating the network layers, and introducing protections for the compute layer, there is better control over workload at all layers. All right, let's move on to data protection. Now, an AWS customer has full control over their data. AWS makes it easy for you to encrypt your data and manage keys, which can be easily automated by AWS or even maintained by you. So in this area of security pillar, we are concerned with ensuring that data is actually classified and then protected in transit and at rest. OK, so let's take the same architecture as the example. Now, our workload has CloudFront and an application load balancer. And the team will use something called as AWS Certificate Manager or ACM to enable encryption of data in transit. Now, AWS Certificate Manager is a service that lets you easily provision, manage, and deploy certificates for use with AWS services. Now, anyone who has had to manage their own certificates know, knows that the renewal process can be quite frustrating. And if the deadline is actually missed, that can lead to an outage. Helpfully, AWS Certificate Manager manages the renewal process for the certificates. Now, to protect the data at rest, we could use AWS Key Management Service or KMS. 
KMS makes it easy to create and manage cryptographic keys, and KMS natively integrates into a wide range of AWS services. In this architecture, KMS integrates to encrypt data at rest in the Elastic File System and on EBS volumes, which are associated with EC2 instances, and for the Aurora database. Now, without classifying data, you don't know what level of protection is actually needed for each type of data. For example, some data may be highly sensitive, which is why Amazon Maisy comes into the picture. All right, the next principle to consider is ways that people can be kept away from data. And now we have actually par partly achieved this with the multi-account strategy implemented earlier. We can take this a step further by automating the use of Macy to identify data where it shouldn't be. Now, let's say that you want to set up a data lake and we are using the S3 bucket to store that data. In this monitor bucket, you don't need to have the sensitive information and you would only need the anonymous data for your analytical calculations. So how can we use Macy to automatically protect customer data? Well, when Macy creates a finding to say that sensitive data has been identified, a rule can be triggered in even bridge. And then a Lambda function can then handle the finding and send a notification to Slack so that the end user is alerted that sensitive data has been incorrectly transferred to the bucket. The user can then smartly respond in Slack to trigger an automation through API gate and Lambda to remediate the issue. And then Lambda can remove the data from the monitored bucket and copy it to a quarantine bucket for a later investigation. The Lambda function can then send another alert to the team via Slack to confirm that it's been done, all without anyone having to even see the data. All right, let's move on to incident response. Now, one still needs to put in place process to respond to and mitigate the potential Im impact of security instance. And whenever a detective control is implemented, a corresponding response should be formulated at the same time. All right, so le let's see how we achieve this. Now, as part of implementing detective controls, we turn on Amazon Guard Duty. Guard Duty takes in data from VPC flow logs, DNS logs, CloudTrail events, and S3 data plane events. And then what GuardDuty does is uses threat intelligence to create heuristic alerts, such as when detecting Bitcoin mining within the infrastructure. It also creates alerts based on anomalies detected by machine learning. All right, so let's move to the topic of playbooks. Now, using the list of available detections and creating a playbook to respond to each of them is a great starting point to build the team's incident response capability. Now, playbooks don't have to be complex. They can be as simple as a text markdown file, as you see that, that outlines the scenario and the expected next steps. In the example here, what does the team do if they find a suspicious activity on an EC2 instance? Now, there are some logs to gather to see what happened and some next steps to investigate. There is also an escalation path to ensure that the incident can be resolved and some simple resolution steps to contain the incident. The team can then take these playbooks and run an event simulation from time to time to practice them, ensure that they are correct. The good news is you don't have to start from scratch. We have a number of incident response playbooks available on GitHub to get you started. All right, now how do we automate the response? Now, new findings in Security Hub can trigger an event bridge rule as we saw earlier. The playbooks can be codified in tools such as AWS Lambda or AWS Step Functions. And by the way, Step Functions is a low-code visual workflow service that can be used in this case to automate the response process. Using a pre-provisioned cross-account role, the playbooks can run automations in AWS System Manager to respond to the finding and remediate it. On completion, the playbooks can then alert the team that the event has already been mitigated. Now, this means that the incident has been mitigated without having to wait for somebody to log on, find the correct playbook, and then respond. That brings us to the end of this presentation. And here are some additional resources to probe more on this topic. And that said, a couple of my colleagues have provided detailed presentations on this topic at reInvent and AWS Summit 2022 under the title, Security Best Practices, the Well-Architected Way. I highly recommend you to watch these videos over YouTube.